Look, I know I said I was going to make more Walking Dead analysis. Don't worry, I'm working on them. But I want to talk about something else right now. Liminal spaces. A trend that has garnered massive attention across the internet, and one that has fascinated me for a very long time. Look at this photo. What does it make you feel? Alone? Nostalgic? Scared? What about this one? What a liminal image is, is incredibly debated. Google states that it's a transitional space between two different locations. For example, a liminal space could be a gas station, hotel, hallway, because all of these things can be found on the way to your eventual location. You might encounter a gas station while on a road trip, a literal trip to get from one location to the next. Same with a hotel. You don't stay there for very long and are often there to transition from one place to the next. But then you have images like this. This isn't a transition. In fact, it's a destination. A home is where you likely spend the majority of your time and would by no means be considered as something you encounter while on a journey or going from one place to the next. But this is still a liminal image. What about this one? This isn't a transition either. All of the images I've shown you are from the Liminal Space subreddit, a place designed to showcase the most liminal of liminal images. Many people online have discussed the wide variety of feelings they get while looking at these images, but what is the actual definition of a liminal space, and why do we feel the things we feel when looking at these images? Let's find out. So I've given some examples of what a liminal space image could look like, and you may have noticed that there doesn't seem to be many underlying commonalities. There are so many different styles, locations, and ways liminal images can be made, but I've narrowed it down to a few criteria that most liminal spaces use to get the desired effect. Not every image will have all of these traits, but they are the most common. Criteria number one, the absence of people. This is probably the only necessity of a liminal space image. There's almost always an absence of people and wildlife no matter the context or location the photo is taken in. A picture with a person in it is almost always discredited as a liminal space image. An empty image gives off a vibe of uncertainty and uncanniness. Think of places that are commonly bustling with people but are now completely empty. Schools, malls, airports, all of these locations are usually populated, so if you strip the image of all the people, it's going to give off a weird feeling, like you're someplace you're not supposed to be. It's something you're not used to seeing, so it messes with you. What does your school look like when no one's there? What if you're left home alone? A specific moment in media that I want to use to highlight this point is Season 1, Episode 1 of The Twilight Zone, titled, Where Is Everyone? As you can expect given the title, this episode centers around a man who's found himself in a fully functioning, empty town. Nobody as far as the eye can see. He goes throughout this town looking for people and can't find anyone anywhere. It's a fascinating episode and I won't spoil the end because it's really cool. But this undeniably ties into liminal spaces because the lack of people in this episode is the center of the horror. There aren't monsters, nobody's out to get him, he's alone. Church bells ring without anybody operating them, movies run themselves. The episode uses the lack of people to spook the audience. Some shots in this episode could be liminal spaces on their own. I recommend you watch it just to see some of this liminality, it's really interesting to see. Now, another part of this criteria that's usually left absent in liminal photos is furniture. This is less common than life in general, but often furniture is completely missing. Like for example, there's a point in Breaking Bad where Walter's house is empty, and it gave me such a weird feeling. Seeing a home usually populated with people, couches, and tables completely empty made me feel melancholic like this home is being unused and uncared for. All this feeling for a frickin' house, just because it has no people and no furniture. In the same vein, but in the opposite way, is when unnatural furniture and architecture is placed in places it shouldn't be. Take this image, for example. Why is there a TV in a room with a bicycle? And those walls and carpets don't match. Using uncanny or unusual architecture and furniture is another way to elevate a liminal image and take it to the next level. 
While the absence of people is definitely a necessary part of liminal imagery, just because a space has no people doesn't mean it is necessarily a liminal space. A big example is abandoned or dilapidated buildings. While these are usually empty, a big part of the emptiness of liminal spaces is the fact that our brain can't comprehend it. With a broken down or abandoned building, we can understand why something like that would happen. But with something like an office with perfectly functioning lights, part of the spook factor is the fact that we can't understand why it's so empty. Who's running the lights and electricity if no one else is here? And that's why location is also so important because just because it's empty doesn't make it liminal. And hey, that's actually criteria number two, location and time. Where an image is taken is really important. After all, an image of an ocean wouldn't make for a very good liminal image. So places that are more obscure are often chosen. Hospitals, schools, pools, because these places are often easier to give off that weird feeling than similar images of a different location. The time a picture is taken is also really important. Some images are taken at dusk, and that gives them a very surreal look to them, while others are taken in the middle of the day, and these images will often feel more natural and real. The opposite is true for night photos. An image taken at night will give off a creepier atmosphere through the fear of the dark and unknown. Naturally, night photos will make us uncomfortable, and that's no exception for liminal photos. Photos of dark forests, while being very familiar, will also give off a natural, terrifying atmosphere that will just hook the viewer and make them scared. Another factor to keep in mind is fog. Liminal images thrive on the feeling of uncertainty, and one of the best ways to do that is with fog. Liminal images often use fog to give off a weird vibe, and fog can really spook the viewer out because of its unknowable nature. So the choice of when and where a photo is taken is incredibly important because these choices will really change the final result of the image. Criteria number three, nostalgia. My introduction to liminal spaces was video compilations on YouTube titled something like Strange But Familiar Places or Places You Feel Like You've Been To Before, and some of them felt like places I've legitimately been to. I knew that I hadn't, but some of these images felt nostalgic. I felt a weird drive to visit them again despite not knowing where that even was. A lot of images take place in schools or children's play places. Images taking place in really nostalgic areas are often the best examples of liminal photography. This also has to do with what I think a lot of Gen Zers are going through right now, where they have a sudden desire to go back to when they were young. This is something I personally experience quite a bit when playing Minecraft. The music is able to bring me back to being a kid again, and it's Similar to images like this, where you just get sucked in by nostalgia and a desire to be there again. I find that some of the most captivating liminal images are those from weird and obscure places that a lot of times we wouldn't even remember. Places that feel so familiar and so safe, captured in such a way that can make you feel nostalgic. A common factor among liminal images is the low quality camera usually used. Oftentimes, photos are captured using or edited to look like mid-2000s cameras, and part of it adds an uncanny nature to the images. Often, these cameras aren't able to capture light or fog quite right, and it makes the image feel unnatural. The surreal lighting, colors, and sky used in these photos usually work together to build a weird and uncomfortable environment. This ties in with nostalgia because the often bad quality of the camera can make the images feel like something your mom or dad would take. They make the images feel homey, comfortable, understandable. Personally, when I was young, my family would often take home videos, and a lot of these images feel like they could be directly taken from a home video, which makes the images feel all the more at home. But because the images that on their own would feel comforting are taken without people in them, the images can give off a vibe of uncertainty, discomfort, or intense nostalgia. So those are the three main criteria that I think describes what a liminal image is. 
But now let's talk about the feelings you may get while looking at them. People seem to have a wide variety of reactions to liminal images, but the most common ones are that of fear, anxiety, and comfort. Now, some images will give off different feelings depending on the person. For example, this image may make someone with megalophobia scared, while it makes others feel completely different. What someone finds unnerving is entirely built on who that person is. Oftentimes, I feel the anxiety and discomfort people feel is made mainly caused by the uncanniness of the image itself. An empty hall or a picture of an empty suburb will by nature make a lot of people uncomfortable because it feels unnatural. This harkens back to the idea of a place usually filled with life being completely isolated. This loneliness also opens up the idea of, what if I'm not alone? Think when you were a kid and you were left home alone for the first time, you felt scared because without your parents, who knows what else might be in your home? So when you're shown a photo of an empty house, you'll likely get a similar home alone style of feelings. Photos like these, for one reason or another, make us feel like there's something else with us. Whether it's an abandoned carnival or a dark forest, liminal spaces by nature will make us feel like there's something or someone lurking just out of sight in the shadows. And this uncertainty and unknowingness will make the viewer naturally uncomfortable. Are you ever really alone in these photos? Is there something waiting for you just around the corner? On the other hand, a lot of people feel comfort in liminal spaces. Scrabble on YouTube has a really good YouTube on the reasons why he feels liminal spaces aren't scary and instead places of peace and tranquility. And basically states that when in a bad headspace, there's a desire to be alone and liminal spaces can bring that feeling to you. I feel the pool rooms by Jared Pike are a great example of why so many people feel drawn to liminal spaces as a means to escape. The water is clear, beautiful, and the walls give off a very dreamlike and safe environment. The pool rooms have never really been a scary concept to me. It feels like heaven. The beautiful sunlight permeates the rooms and glistens off the walls and water. There can be a slight sense of dread because, once again, it feels like you're not alone, but looking at these spaces, there's a desire to visit and just relax. Leave the stress of life and just relax in the pool rooms. So liminal images can make you feel a wide variety of emotions, from fear, to anxiety, to uncertainty. And I personally think the reason for this is because it's art. Art by nature is very dependent on who the viewer viewing the particular piece of art is. An image that makes you personally feel scared or anxious may make others feel safe and comfortable. And liminal images have kind of been swept under the rug when it comes to digital art. A lot of times people don't talk about it as a piece of art, rather some internet phenomena. I think this is in no small part to the explosion of Backrooms content as of late. For those who don't know, The Backrooms is a popular creepypasta centered around falling into different liminal spaces from our current reality. And I've talked about it in three videos up until this point, so I probably should talk about it in its own separate video. It was a popular story for sure, but Kane Pixel's video on YouTube exploded the genre. Many people have created their own additions and contributions to the story, and overall, I would say both Kane Pixels and the pandemic helped launch liminal spaces into the limelight. But I think over time, liminal spaces have kind of lost their artistic appeal. Because like I said, my and a lot of other people's introduction to the concept of liminal spaces are from photo compilations on YouTube, and those videos kind of helped explore the way these different photos made you feel. But while the liminality of the backrooms is definitely felt, and Kane Pixel's video is an awesome piece of art, the addition of things like exits and especially entities can kind of depreciate the artistic value of liminal spaces. This is actually such a big deal that the Liminal Spaces subreddit will not allow any image with an entity in it because it detracts from the art. It replaces the liminal feeling for an obvious fear of the entity. And I know I'm sounding like an art snob right now, but I'm kind of sad that a lot of people don't look for the value in a liminal image and instead look for a way to make it scarier. Another interesting thing about liminal spaces is the timeline when they started to get popular. As you can see by Google Trends, the term liminal spaces started to gain decent attraction in 2020 around the beginning of the pandemic and then really exploded around the time Kane Pixel's video came out. Why I say this is interesting is because one of the main factors of liminal spaces, like I've said, is the absence of people. And what did we see at the beginning of the pandemic? Empty roads, grocery stores, 
the lack of people in places there usually is. And the usually bustling Las Vegas Strip is almost entirely deserted. Liminal spaces emerged at just the right time. People were looking for comfort in an unsafe time, and liminal spaces were able to bring familiarity to those people. While now you may look at liminal, <laughs> liminal. While now you may look at liminal images and feel unnerved or fearful, I think part of the draw of liminal spaces, especially during the pandemic, was to find another place similar to our current reality. Empty places that bring a feeling of nostalgia to an uncertain, fearful time. Now, how I feel about liminal spaces is kind of a mix of all these feelings. When it comes to certain images, I feel an intense feeling of dread and uncertainty, mainly pictures that are dark and ominous in nature just give me the creeps, but this isn't always the case because images that don't give off a scary atmosphere are also able to make me feel incredibly uncomfortable. But other images are able to give me a feeling of comfort and contentedness, like the pool rooms or certain paintings. Like I've said before, what a liminal image makes you feel is entirely dependent on what the image is and who you are. And that's something that I find so awesome about liminal spaces, and it's the fact that multiple different images can be lumped under the category of liminality, but can make so many people feel such a wide variety of feelings. I think the mix of nostalgia and creepy atmospheres can make a liminal image something truly special. And it's even more special when an image is nostalgic, but not creepy by nature, such as a fully functioning arcade or a child's play place, is able to capture the exact same feeling, whether it be uncertainty and fear or comfort. All this to say, a liminal image can make you feel many different emotions, but the liminal feeling is very distinct and common throughout all liminal images. And that's because the feeling you get is weird. It's strange, it's familiar, but unknown. It's a feeling you can't get through regular living it can only really be unlocked through certain experiences and captures of those moments. If you've ever stayed after school and walked through an empty hallway, you may get that weird liminal feeling. Being in an empty room in a place you're not quite familiar with, like an aunt or uncle's house, will give you an uncomfortable feeling. And while this feeling can be split apart to uncertainty, to fear and anxiety, comfort, they all fall under the liminal feeling umbrella and not many other pieces of art are able to capture such a weird and unique feeling in the way liminal images are able to. So the majority of this video has been focused on liminal photography because that's the biggest way people can show off the concept of liminality. But another aspect of liminal images is those shown through games. One highlight I specifically want to talk about in this video is the Doom map myhouse.wad. This was a map that was extremely popular last year, and it has just a fascinating and mind-boggling story, but in terms of liminality, where do I start? While there are many demons and monsters in the game, this is Doom after all, there are entire sections just completely devoid of life, some looking very similar to popular liminal images. There's one part in the map where you're in a children's daycare, and once again, you're the only one there. There's places by the forest with no one and no car in sight, and the biggest one, the back rooms is literally an easter egg in the game. Yeah, it's whatever. The map overall is incredibly tense and creepy. I recommend Power Pack's video if you want a deeper dive on this map specifically. But the use of liminal spaces like the daycare and the airport all serve to make the game feel a little bit off. When the game of Doom is so driven by killing demons, when you enter a place where there are no demons, it feels incredibly off, and uncertainty starts to become a driving factor. And it's so impressive that some of the tensest moments in this Doom map are the moments where there's no one to fight, just you and the empty liminal environments. But while liminality can increase the horror in scary games like these, Let's talk about a game that is definitely not a horror game, and one that I've already talked about in this video. Minecraft is a survival game. Are there monsters? Yes. Are there villagers? Yes. But there's also moments like this. Dead silent. No birds chirping. No monsters. Just you alone. Minecraft, for being as engaging and fun as it is, is an incredibly quiet game. Unless you're playing on multiplayer, there's no player-like entity to be found in the game. You're alone, and there's nothing you can do to change that. Moments in the game, especially early on, can feel extremely lonely, and at parts, 
I can definitely see the liminal feeling take effect. There are many compilations on YouTube of pictures taken from Minecraft with some filters put over it, and these images spark that liminal feeling in me so much. Like I said earlier, Minecraft is probably the number one nostalgia for me. Nostalgia? Nostal- Nostalgia? Nostalgia causer? You know what I mean. So when people use the effects like noise and VHS style edits, the liminal feelings are off the charts. Now, I plan to have part of this video be me making different liminal spaces in Blender, because it's kind of become a pastime of mine and I enjoy it very much, but part of me wants to save that for a future video, so if you want to see that, comment and let me know down below. Also, drink some water, dude, you look dehydrated. So we've discussed what a liminal space is, an abandoned place using nostalgic locations and camera techniques to make the viewer feel uncomfortable, a place of dread or a place of peace, a place seemingly lost to time and space, a place we can never see except in these images. And the feelings these images can make us feel are unlike anything that can be experienced, a truly special feeling that is impossible to truly understand. I've been fascinated with liminal spaces since my introduction to them in the pandemic, and I'm so glad I had the opportunity to talk about them here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This was probably my favorite script to write, and I just had a blast going through all these images. I really hope you have a great day. God bless, and until next time.